Okay, you should see the recording button, everyone. And I'm going to admit everyone from the waiting room. Welcome everyone um, to the West Water Company public meeting. We're going to get started at six o'clock, um, which is about five minutes from now. So as uh, people are arriving, we're going to let them in. Um, just know that we are waiting to get started. Betty, if folks are having trouble with uh, any of their connections or need have tech questions, could you remind us what the uh, email address is for support? Yes, um, it's ddw-norcalengagement at waterboards.ca.gov. Great, so if for some reason you're um, having trouble with your tech, that would be the email address you could go to. Again, as uh, folks are joining us, this is just a uh, to let you know that we're going to be starting the West Water Company public meeting uh, right at six o'clock. We're giving people a chance to get logged on, um, make sure that they can hear us and um, and see the screen. And for those of you who are just joining us, uh, we're gonna be getting the meeting in um, about a minute or two. We're just letting some final folks um, log in and get their video and audio set up.
All right, folks, it is six o'clock now. Um, we'll probably have some people coming in um, still as we get started. But um, Bruce, did you want to begin the meeting? Thanks, Jessica. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this meeting concerning the West Water Company. My name is Bruce Burton, and I work for the State Water Resources Control Board. Several other board staff are with me this evening to make sure you get the information you need and can participate as much as possible during the question and answer portion of the meeting. Betty Germa will be going over our meeting logistics. Jessica Bean and Stephen Coe will facilitate your questions and comments. Just so you're aware, I will be reading from my notes for each slide as we go through this presentation. This is to ensure that I don't leave out any information that we want to present you, to you this evening. Next slide, please. So the purpose of this meeting is to provide you with information about the State Water Board's proposed actions that will be take, take place in the West Water Company Consolidation Project and to get your feedback and answer your questions about these actions. We are proposing an operational managerial consolidation, which means that when consolidated, the water system will continue to be operated independently and have no physical or legal connection to any other public water system. The purpose of the proposed action are to make sure the West water system reliably provides safe, affordable drinking water to its customers for the foreseeable future. This will involve changing the ownership to a local government entity replacing all the aging parts of the water system that are in poor condition and subject to failure, and making West water system of service available to residents on Riverside Drive who want it if that proves to be feasible. I need to emphasize that last statement. We hope to offer residents on Riverside Drive the opportunity to receive service from the West water system, but it will be entirely up to them whether they choose to do so. The State Water Board doesn't have any authority to force anyone on Riverside Drive to connect to the West Water System who does not want to. And again, that is assuming that it proves feasible to do so. Before we get into the meeting itself, we need to go over the meeting logistics to ensure that everyone attending understands how to participate. Betty Germa is now going to conduct this part of the meeting. So Betty, would you go over our logistics, please? All right, hi everyone, my name is Betty and I will be going over some logistics. So today's presentation is going to be a PowerPoint presentation with slides that you can follow along with on the screen if you are on your computer. Um, the slides were also posted on our website, so if you are on the phone, um, you can follow along if you have printed those in advance. All the documents that we will refer to, as well as a recorded version of this presentation, is available at the following link waterboards.ca.gov slash drinking water underscore water slash programs slash compliance slash index.html. And lastly, everyone will be muted until the question and answer portion of the presentation so that we can go through all slides smoothly and without any interruptions. If you are attending the meeting by phone, you will have the opportunity to provide comments or questions at the end of the presentation. If you are attending on your computer, you can email questions to norcalengagement at waterboards.ca.gov during the meeting and we will respond to them during the question and answer portion of the presentation. Um, we will also open it up to comments and questions at the end of the meeting for everyone who is on both their phone and on the computer. So you can raise your Zoom hand if you have a question or comment during the Q&A portion of this meeting. Um, so there are two steps to raising your hand via the computer. The first step is to click the participants button at the bottom of the screen. This brings up several options to choose from to provide nonverbal feedback. The second step is to select the raise hand option 
this will let us know that you have a question and that you are raising your hand. So you can see on the screen here, um, the first step is highlighted with the one arrow and it says it's pointing to the participants. And then the second step, which is clicking on raise hand is um, highlighted with the second arrow. And in this slide, you can see uh, if you're out, your uh, computer might look a little bit different. So this is another way that it might look. And I have circled the raise hand uh, button that you would click. And if you are on the phone, you can also raise your hand. And to raise your hand via the phone, simply dial star nine, and it'll let us know that you are raising your hand. Now we can practice raising and lowering hands. So if you can, please try to raise your hand. And if you're on the phone, uh, dial uh, star nine. Um, I'm going to give everyone a couple more minutes to, to find the raise hand button and then we can move on. And once again, um, if you cannot, for whatever reason, uh, figure out how to use the raising hands functionality, you can always email your questions directly to the email inbox um, that we had specified earlier and we'll also provide it at the end of the meeting. All right, I think we can move on. So now I'll hand it back to Bruce and he'll go over the specifics of the West Fire system. Thank you, Betty. This slide gives a summary of the information we intend to present this evening. An overview of the West Water System, the actions the State Water Board is proposing to take, why the State Water Board is taking these actions, what the State Board intends to accomplish, the process that will be used, and uh, most importantly, receiving input from all of you and answering any questions you have. Next slide, please. As you can see from the current slide, the West Water System consists of a 62-foot deep well that was drilled in 1992, a 5,000-gallon storage tank, a booster pump that pumps water to customers through the pipes, several small pressure tanks to keep water pressure in the system when the booster pump is off, a liquid chlorine disinfection system, and distribution system pipes installed in the mid-1950s, which consist of small diameter galvanized pipe. Next slide, please. So consolidation, what does it really mean? State law gives the State Water Board authority to order a public water system to be consolidated. However, the law requires that one public water system can only be required to consolidate with another public water system. As such, the State Water Board does not have the authority to order Sonoma County to directly take ownership of the West Water Company. But once consolidated, the West Water System will be owned and operated by Sonoma County. The West Water System will become the West Water District in Sonoma County Service Area 41, CSA 41. The West Water System will continue to be operated and regulated as an independent public water system with no physical connection to any other water system or any legal ties to any other public water system, including the Fitch Mountain Water System. Sonoma County currently owns and operates four public water systems that are zones of benefit within County Service Area 41. When consolidated, the West Water System will be its fifth zone of benefit within CSA 41. 
Each zone of benefit is legally responsible for generating the income it needs to provide water service to its customers. Next slide, please. So why is the State Board taking this action? We are taking this action because the water system has failed to make required improvements to ensure the delivery of safe water to customers and because the board does not believe the water system can operate reliably without one or more failures in the future. And these failures could leave the customers with no water. There are three primary areas of concern. The first is the physical condition and deficiencies of the water system. The well is in poor condition. Failure of this well would leave the community without any water. Based on historical maximum daily use, the system needs at least another 20,000 gallons of storage to ensure the community can be supplied with water during times of water system repairs or failures. The community is using more water than it is legally allowed each day during large parts of the dry season and is facing significant water rights enforcement by the State Water Board. The water system has a license to use 6,500 gallons per day year round. However, in the summer, it uses significantly more than that. And the distribution system pipes are close to 65 years old, are likely leaking, which results in lost and wasted water and may have corrosion that is reducing the flow of water through the pipes. Next slide, please. The second concern is a potentially serious water quality problem from bacteria. Historically, water from the well has had bacteriological contamination. This is the reason chlorination disinfection was ordered to be installed on the well in 1999. In February of 2019, the well, the well produced a water sample that contained E. coli bacteria. Bacteriological contamination seems to occur when the river is high in the winter, since the well is only 62 feet deep. When the river level is high, river water has the potential to enter the well more easily. Next slide, please. The third concern the State Water Board has is that the West is very small and is privately owned. As a result, the revenue it generates is not enough to pay for the improvements that are needed. It cannot qualify for private financing to make the needed improvements. Under the current ownership, it couldn't qualify for funding from the State Water Board. And the water company cannot serve any residents on Riverside Drive because it's regulated by the California Public Utilities Commission and can only serve customers in its defined service area. I'll talk a little more about serving residents on Riverside Drive later in the presentation. Because of these factors, the State Board believes it's necessary to take this action, this consolidation action, so that the system is capable of reliably providing water service to its customers into the foreseeable future. It is particularly important to do this now because there is state grant and low interest loan funding available which the community can qualify for to pay for much of the required improvements. Next slide, please. The State Water Board's ultimate goals in taking these actions are to change the ownership to a sustainable public entity and to complete improvements that are determined to be necessary based on the results of the detailed assessment that will be performed on the water system. The State Water Board's preliminary assessment indicates that improvements that may be determined to be necessary by the detailed assessment may include a new well to ensure a reliable supply of water, adequate storage for system reliability, a new distribution system to provide reliable service and minimize leaks, monitoring equipment so that the system can be monitored and controlled remotely to minimize the cost of operating the system, and customer water meters so the cost of operating and maintaining the system 
can be equitably divided among the customers. We also want to provide water service to those residents on Riverside Drive who wish to receive it. But again, that is if it proves to be feasible to do so. And to ensure a safe, reliable supply of drinking water is provided to the system customers for the foreseeable future. Next slide, please. As I said, state law gives the Water Board authority to order one public water system to be consolidated with another one. The Board must make specific findings regarding the water system to be consolidated, and the consolidation must be done through multiple steps that are spelled out in the law. In this part of the presentation, I will go briefly through the major steps the Water Board intends to take and is taking to satisfy these requirements and accomplish its goal for the West Water System. The first step in the consolidation process is to officially notify the water system that will be consolidated, in this case West, and the water system that will be required to take the other, West, other water system, in this case, Sonoma County CSA 41 Fitch Mountain, that they have six months to negotiate a voluntary consolidation that notification was done in a letter to Sonoma County and a letter to the West Water Company dated February 10, 2020. The next step is to hold a public meeting to inform all the ratepayers, the renters, the property owners of the proposed action and to gather input on the consolidation. As you know, that meeting was originally scheduled for March, March 16th, but was canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The six months period to negotiate a voluntary consolidation would have started on March 16th, the date of the originally scheduled meeting. Because we had to cancel that meeting, the six month period will now start as of today, October 15th, 2020. Next, we intend to order the company to accept the services of a full scope administrator to take legal control of the West water system. On the next slide, I want to go into more detail about the administrator before I continue with the additional steps in the overall consolidation process. Next slide, please. Ordering the company to accept a full scope administrator is one step we are adding to the consolidation process. The administrator will take over complete management and operational control of the water system. This will be done primarily so that the administrator can start the process to obtain funding from the State Water Board to make the necessary improvements for the system. The administrator will also oversee the consolidation process, oversee an in-depth evaluation of the water system determine, to determine what needs to be replaced or repaired, deal with the water rights issues, coordinate a rate analysis to determine the necessary rates to operate the improved system. At this point in time, we don't know whether the current rates will need to change. However, I need to stress that whatever improvements are made to the system, will be done in a manner to make it as efficient as possible to operate. And the administrator will also keep system customers informed of the consolidation improvement project status on a regular basis. You will all be provided with the qualifications of the proposed administrator once the selection is made. But before the administrator order, <clears throat> excuse me, is issued to give you time to review them and give us any comments you have, more information on appointing an administrator will be provided in the near future. Next slide, please. Now back to the process of consolidation. Our preliminary evaluation makes us believe the system needs a new well and increase in storage to provide at least one day maximum use for the system reliability possible replacement of the distribution system based on determining its current condition, new monitoring equipment, 
so the system can be monitored and co controlled remotely in customer water meters. These improvements would be funded by state water board grant or loan funds. Because this community served by West is eligible for grant funding, a significant portion of these improvements may be paid for by grant funding. As I stated earlier, one of the reasons for appointing an administrator to the system is to get the funding process started as soon as possible. One improvement that will be made in the relatively near future is the installation of an emergency generator to enable the water system to continue to provide water in the event of a power outage. This will be done using emergency grant funds from the state board. The funding source also includes money to provide service to those currently supplied by individual wells where they meet the required criteria and where it is feasible. As a result, we are going to contact the property owners on Riverside Drive to determine how many would like to receive service from the West system once the improvement project is completed, if it is determined to be feasible. Adding customers on Riverside Drive would have two positive impacts. It would provide safe, reliable water to those on Riverside Drive who need it, and it will increase the number of customers in the system over which the cost of operating the system will be spread. Since adding customers on Riverside Drive will have little impact on the cost of operating the system, the addition of customers will help minimize customer water rates. The state board must then determine the fair market value of the existing water system. State law requires that the owner of a privately owned water system that is ordered to consolidate be paid for the water system at its fair market value. We've already started this step and a consultant, consultant is in the process of being hired to do this task. The state board will then make the required findings, which allows it to issue the formal order requir requiring consolidation. Next slide, please. The second public meeting will be held at the end of the voluntary negotiation period, sometime in April 2021. The consolidation order will then be issued. The State Water Board will pay the system owners the fair market value of the water system. The ownership of the West system will then be transferred to Sonoma County. And the construction project for the necessary water system improvements will continue until they are completed. Those are the major steps that must happen to complete this project. It could take three years or more from now to complete everything, including all the improvements to the water system. Next slide, please. That didn't take too long, but that essentially moves us into the portion of the meeting for your comments and questions. We'll be reading and addressing any comments and questions that were emailed during the presentation and asking those of you who raised your hand or raise your hand now to share your comments and questions. When it is your turn, please tell us who you are and your connection to the West Water Company. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Jessica who will and Stephen who will facilitate enabling you to ask your questions. Great, thank you, Bruce, for that presentation. Looks like we have some folks starting to um, raise their hand. I'm going to, uh, what I'll do is I'll call your name and ask you to unmute. Um, some of you, uh, the, the name and the Zoom may not be accurate. So let's see, we'll start with Pat. Hi, I'm Pat Abercrombie. I live on Fitch Mountain. I'm president of the Fitch Mountain Association. Um, and um, thank you for the, presentation this answered um, questions that we have I just I have one um, maybe difficult to answer question that is just at what point will Westwater become 
part of CSA 41 Fitch, and then at what point and approximately when in time will West Water um, become its own zone of benefit within CSA 41? Well, we haven't, uh, since I'm not uh, intimately familiar with how the county operates, but I have been in conversation with county staff and uh, asked them about their other zones of benefit and the county holds, holds title to the, that property. So I am assuming during this process, the county will form a zone of benefit and I'm not quite sure how that happens, but I'm assuming since we have minimum of six months and probably much longer before the actual transfer of assets happens that there'll be sufficient time to have that all set up before, I mean, when it's ready to happen. Um, if I could follow on, in your um, earlier slide where you showed the steps, um, it was one of the last slides. Um, was it transfer of water system to Sonoma County? Uh, the second one from the bottom is, is that a, a, when that zone of benefit will be created or? I uh, can't answer that, but we will be working with the county and I assume that the county will want to have that zone of benefit form ready for the water system. So I, I don't know how else they would do it, but um, you know, we will be updating, uh, well, the administrator will be updating those involved on a regular basis. So that is something that should be known well before it happens. Okay. Um, and um, I can I can talk to county staff and get back to you on that and see what I, I find out. The, I think the I mean CSA forty one Fitch is is we've been briefed and I I believe um, that um, I can speak freely that we support this process and understand that that it it has um, at least no intentional impact on our operation or our finances um, or anything like that. But um, in the event that Fitch Mountain um, water system would want to um, go out for grant funding for a project for our own water system, um, we're somewhat concerned that as long as West Water has been merged in, that we will look like an entity that, that includes the West Water um, I'll just call them liabilities at this point, what you've been sharing here um, in your previous mm -hmm. slides. So we're um, hoping that the period of time where Westwater is part of Fitch Mountain CSA 41 is, is as short and controlled as, as possible. Yes. And that was more of a comment uh, than a question. Right. A little more to reassurance, state law work specifically states that the customers of the receiving system, if, if that were happened in, for any brief period of time, cannot uh, essentially be held liable to pay for any, anything in the system that's being consolidated. Understood. So um, Pat, do you want to, um, if you wouldn't mind uh, sending an email to us uh, with your email address so that we can follow up with you on that question after Bruce is able to talk to the county. Sure, we will do. That would probably be a great idea. And um, Betty, would you mind putting up the screen with the, the, the email address on it? I, I have it. Oh, you have it? Okay, yeah. great. I just want to make sure we can answer that question for you as well. Thank you very much, yes. Absolutely. Pat, did you have anything else you wanted to ask? At this time, no, I don't, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, how about Peter? Thank you and good evening. My name is Peter Keel. I'm an attorney that was recently retained by Westwater Company to advise it 
in evaluating this consolidation proposal and also to help inform the fair market valuation process. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the valuation of the water system that um, Bruce mentioned. Um, the owners of the water company may choose to speak about this, but I could offer some general comments, which is it's my understanding they do not intend to oppose consolidation, but rather they would like to help it go as smoothly as possible for the customers on Melsey Way and also Riverside Drive if they elect to join in a new water system if that is feasible. Um, I, I can agree with some general comments that uh, Mr. Burton made that the water company does not have the financial resources to do the capital improvements that the water board deems necessary. Um, I, I did want to express some practical concerns and, and maybe offer a couple comments as well. And if you wouldn't mind allowing me the opportunity to maybe comment later if there are questions that I could help address from the water company side, I'll be glad to do so. But if I, I could uh, start with some general comments, um, and this is kind of advice on, on things to look for. The water system is primarily located on private property. The water company doesn't have discrete easements or other uh, property interests in that private property. So when the state is looking at valuation of the system and future transition um, or transfer of that facility to a new operator, uh, I'd like you to keep in mind that it is on private property with a residence. It could affect the property value, its marketability. You could be mindful, I think that would be um, greatly appreciated for the owners of the water company. Um, the second is a kind of a, a, a comment on whether County CSA 41 is the right NAD to provide service. I'll note that um, these two um, these two streets, this community is within the, the Cloverdale City urban growth boundary and an approved sphere of influence. Um, so if City of Cloverdale chose to provide water service and other service, um, it could. And so I guess my question is to Mr. Burton and others, you know, can you explain whether Cloverdale was approached and why Cloverdale isn't being proposed for operation of, of the system. Thank you. It's my understanding and uh, that the, the uh, district office in Santa Rosa that regulates all the public water systems in Sonoma County is engaged with the city of Cloverdale to consolidate several other water systems. And as a result, the county CSA was chosen. So it's, uh, and the county CSA is willing to take this on. Um, do, will the, the county CSA comment today or could that happen in the future? That'll happen in the future, but this is, we are talking about a mandatory consolidation. And we have been talking with the county about that. We have the authority to order the uh, system being consolidated as well as the receiving system. One, uh, several of the, several of the reasons that the county is an attractive receiver for us is they are already in the business. They own and operate four water systems. They have a reliable uh, contract operator who's been operating their systems for going on 25, 30 years. Uh, it, when the system is rebuilt, if you want to call it that, it's a, it will be a fairly simple system to operate. So we don't really see any downside. I don't think that, I mean, that's one thing that the administrator can look at, but operationally, I don't think the cost of operating the system will be much different between 
County CFA 41 and City of Cloverdale. Okay, thank you for that ex explanation. If you wouldn't mind, I have one other comment. It, it, it's a concern or, or something for the Water Board to consider as it moves through this process. A, a, a nearby property former um, lumber yard was proposed for residential development. Um, I forget how many units, but it was sizable for this, for this community. Um, for, I think, primarily economic reasons, that development folded and the property is now for sale, but it is currently being marketed as having zoning approval, or excuse me, zoning potential for 121 residential units. And it's my understanding that there was discussion back during the um, real estate development that the West Water Company water supply could be a source water source for, for development. And so I, I have some concerns that a revamped water system could support that development. If it does, I just urge the uh, residents to be mindful to um, make comments before the county board um, and CSA 41 to inquire whether that's possible, and if it is possible to see what you could do to make sure that um, the impact to your properties is as minimal as possible or as beneficial as possible. So thank you, no further comments or questions at this time. Thank you, Peter. Uh, looks like we have Danita. Danita, did you want to? Yes, my name is Danita Proctor. I'm on the advisory committee for CS40, CSA 41 Fitch Mountain. My question is, um, as we go through this process, the administrator, I'd like to know where the funding is coming from, if it is allocated out of that original agreement that the county made with the water board, or if that administrator, until it is totally up and refurbished, will will be in your office, in the water board office. Could you hear me? Yes, I hear you, Dina. Bruce, okay. um, I think you might be on mute. Oh, I'm muted? No, no, Danita, you're fine. Um, I, I think Bruce, I was going to ask him to, I'm sorry, it looks like he might be muted. There we go. Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Anyway, um, first off, the administrator is paid for by the state, and it's not the existing contract, the emergency contract uh, that is operating the system. It is completely separate, and so the state is, will pay the cost for the administrator. I'm sorry, what was the second part of your question? Uh, who was handling the appraiser? The appraisal? Uh, yes. We purchased the uh, yeah the appraisal uh, to get that started. We have contracts with different entities to provide technical assistance. That's actually being handled out of Sacramento State University, and they are in the process of negotiating with an engineering firm to do that appraisal. Uh, I don't remember the name of the engineering firm off the top of my head, but they do that. It's it's a line of business that they do. The the we we moved in that direction because we want to make sure that the appraisal is non-biased and done by an independent entity that has no connection with the process we're doing. Okay. Any other questions can be mailed to you by the 20th, is that correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Stephen, do we have any questions coming in through the email address? As far as I can see, I haven't received any emails. Okay. Um, folks, if, if any of you have any other questions, please feel free to use that raise your hand feature. Oh, Joy, it looks like you have a question. Okay. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So I'm a resident of Riverside Drive. 282 Riverside. My name is Joy Camilli. Um, I'm a little concerned with the cost per residence 
for if we decide to join and how the connections are going to be, I mean, are it just going to go like a main connection down the road and then we'll have to provide the, the, from the house to the road, the connection at our own cost or are you, or is it going to be absorbed into it? And then the, the funding for qualifying for funding, how is that going to pro proceed? I mean, do we, we have to fill out, you know, like um, request a grant for that money? Okay, the uh, one reason we uh, want to have an administrator is the administrator would take care of that process as far as the funding application and the nuts and bolts of that. As far as qualifying, the community in that area on, on served by West is designated as a disadvantaged community. And all that means, it's just a legal definition. It means that the median household income is less than 80% of the statewide average median household income. So because of that, that means they're eligible for grant. One of the things that has to be determined if it's feasible to add Riverside Drive is the whether they also meet that same criteria. And if they meet that same criteria, they would be eligible for grant funding to put in the water main, but also, as I've been told by our Depart uh, Division of Financial Assistance, there is also money available to actually do the hookups to individual homes. But we have to first determine if it's feasible to to be included in the project. Mm -hmm. And we would uh, provide information about the potential funding and what the obligation might be, if any, for the residents who chose to connect to the system. Okay, and it is a voluntary connection, you said. So if you do connect the current well systems that are that we have, would they be just capped off and closed or would we still have access to that water? The water you have on your property? Yes, the wells. I, you would still have access to that. You would be required to put in something called a backflow prevention device to make sure right. none of the water on your property gets into the water system. But other than right. that- I'm familiar have... with those, yeah. Okay. Okay. But, but we could still use it for um, watering our, our gardens and our lawns and things like that, we could still have the use of those wells? I think as long as there is a backflow prevention device on your, your connection and it's tested on the required basis, I think you would. Okay. Is, um, is Riverside, if they just choose to go and LCA going to be considered or going to be included in you know, decisions made by the new company that's going to be um, handling it. So we'll have it like a, we'll have a representative on that board. Well, uh, it will it will be the County of Sonoma. But what they have done with their other four uh, water systems they operate, mm -hmm. they have a, an advisory board of residents of the water system that okay. work with them. So I'm assuming they would do the same thing with. Yeah, so well, that's good. Okay, thank you. That answers my questions. Thanks, Joy. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see, I'm gonna raise my hand again. Oh, well, Danita, did you have another question? I do have another question. Um, in the documentation today, you talked about a water use of 6,500 gallons a day for those yeah. houses. Um, and you also mentioned that it is exceeding its license for water rights now. How might they uh, add another 15 or 20 houses onto that um, and, and conf you know, be within the, their water rights? Well, we are looking for uh, additional alternative water rights for the system right now or water sources. So that's something that will have to be developed to 
uh, whether any residents from Riverside Drive are at it or not because they're in violation of their water license. And as I said before, the Division of Water Rights uh, has issued a cease and desist order and they are holding off on significantly greater enforcement action because we're in the process of this consolidation. But the, the system has to, has to have more water regardless of. And since we are looking at the feasibility of adding systems from Riverside Drive, we're including that in the amount of water we're looking for to add to the system. The state is still granting uh, water rights, extra water rights? It's, uh, it, I don't know. it's a long process, but it's not necessarily just water rights. There's other avenues for purchasing water. Oh. And um, I, I'm not a water rights attorney, but we have one online who, who is looking at the whether uh, individual homeowners there have some riparian rights. All right. So that's, that's really up in the air now, but we're, we're conscious of the problem and we're looking for a solution. Okay. Danita, did you have any other questions? No, I'm, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Joy, did you have another question? Yes. So I emailed the email address that came on the letter um, at requesting, you know, information about what was going to happen today or anything that you guys had already had, you know, printed or available. I received nothing back, not even a response. So I'm not sure if I contacted, if there's a different place to contact or when I went to the link at the water board, you know, that said that it would be available five days prior to the meeting. I, I found nothing there either. So where do I find this information at? <laughs> What's going forward if I want to keep track of it? Because me I am not those sure. for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure why they didn't, but we will look into that and make sure that they do. Okay. Yeah, I, I asked them, I said, could you please send me any kind of um, information that you have regarding this meeting and what's going to be happening with it, you know, and I, I didn't even get a response back. So that was, I was a little concerned about that. Did, did, let me just ask, I know, I, I, I don't know if you have a junk mail or mailbox or I, sometimes it may look at as the state is junk mail. So I don't know if that might have I, I have a, you know, Sonic, which is very good and I barely, have anything in my junk mail and it usually tells me what's in my junk mail I get a meet uh, oh, okay. a notice every day what's in there you know to to look for it so and I didn't see anything so yeah um, okay I'm not sure what did, happened but I did also ask for it right after we got the letter so that was like over a month ago so oh, can yeah, I ask um, Bruce I'm not sure if if you or Betty know I know on the it says the recording of this meeting is going to be posted here is this right. the link where other things are going to be posted as well yeah, because when you go to the index where it says water board, drinking water programs, compliance index, mm -hmm. there's nothing there that states that this meeting is even going, you know, where to find this, uh, this meeting on there. You get three tabs and there's tons of information there and nothing about this meeting or this, you know what, this issue. You know what, Joy, we'll, um, we'll talk a little bit more and see if we can make it easier to get a hold of information. Okay. Um, yeah. Definitely. If you want to resubmit to the NorCal engagement at waterboards.ca.gov. Just mm -hmm. um, a reminder to include you on that type of information. We'll make okay. sure that you are on the list and we'll get you information. And then as soon as we um, know exactly where the information is, we will also make sure to That'd um, be great. let you know. I will, send, I will send them another email. Thank yes. you. Thank you, Joy. And I'm sorry about that. I'm not quite sure what happened. It sounds like maybe it got lost in the, um, in, in the netherworld that sometimes yeah. happens with email. And I'm very sorry for that, but we'll make okay. sure to write that in the future. All right, and I'll send you another email. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Did you have any other questions? No. Okay. 
All right. Stephen, do you have anything coming in through? Oh, go ahead. Is that Bruce? Yeah. Um, I got a, a text from Michelle, and she said she could share her screen and give that information. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. Um, Michelle, are you able to share your screen? Sure. Give me one second. Um, you can hear me, I assume. Yes. Okay, fantastic. So let me just share my screen. You can see the recording online and because um, there was a pre-recorded portion as well as the public notice. Um, so let me just share my screen. Hopefully this does it. Can you see my screen? Yes. Take care. So anyhow, if you look here, there's the West Water Company with Sonoma uh, CSA 40, the six month later letter. Um, you can click on here and you can get the, the date of the meeting um, and the information that should have been the, the public letter that you all got ahead of time. Um, and then going backwards, whoops, let's go back to where I was. And then there were the slides and there was a recorded presentation uh, ahead of time for those of you that maybe ha are only able to access through the phone. So um, that information is there and um, we will look into what happened with the email, but uh, I will take this address and I will put it in the chat box so that people can also access it, but we'll also get back to y'all with with um, more information. Thank you, Michelle. Hopefully that helps. Um, this is Betty, and I, I just want to note that um, maybe something, I tried to type it into my computer, and if you forget to do the underscore between drinking and water, like if you just do one word, that might have been an issue. Um, so just, if you're typing it, just make sure that you're, that you don't forget the underscore, because that might have not, you might have not noticed it the first time. Joy, did you have another question? Yeah, my letter didn't have the underscore. That was the problem. <laughs> oh, so there was a typo there. Okay. Yeah. Well, again, very sorry about that. Hopefully, um, we can, we'll look for that for future ones. But now that you've seen that there, hopefully you can get that a little bit yeah. more easily. Yep, that was the problem. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry. All right, any other questions? And again, if, if folks are joining by phone, um, you can hit star nine if you have a question and that'll let us know um, if you wanna raise your hand. So um, it looks like we're not, we don't have any other questions coming in. Um, is there anything else that um, staff, oh, one just came up right now. Hold on one second. Okay, so um, whoever is calling in from the 975 is the last three digits of the phone number. If you wanna unmute, it looks like you're unmuted now. Do you wanna ask your question? Yeah. Yes, my name is Mike Farrick. I've lived hey, on Elsie Way for nine. I've lived on Elsie Way for nine years, and I had a question about the water company, the overtaking of everything, and if it's even possible uh, when they do some of the restructuring of Elsie Way for. Uh, the lines that are, you know, if we're, if we have lines that are 60 years old and leaking, if there's any possibility that there might be a new culvert to take water away from LC Way when it rains, Riverside Drive has a culvert that takes water to the river 
LC Way has no drainage. And if it's the Russian River Water Company or the State Water Company, during this process, it seems like it would be easy to get a ditch uh, dug on LC Way to take water away. I was wondering if that was in anybody's uh, compass or what they're going to narrow in on. Thank you. Well, we are specifically looking at improving the public water system, but depending on what construction is done, particularly if we replace distribution system pipes, I would think even if it's not an eligible funding uh, to be funded, uh, I would think that the county or the administrator, whoever is overseeing the construction project could certainly approach the engineers and the contractor and see what that would cost. And it may be a very minimal cost to everybody on LC Way to have that type of thing done. But it's not something that we would uh, be uh, one of our primary uh, goals, but certainly I don't think it's unreasonable if they're going to be doing construction anyway. If, right. if, uh, we could see what it's going to cost and see if you all wanted to pay for it. Yeah. Are you still there? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I know. I uh, I saw several meetings of people that came down and uh, looked at everything, and one of them was when our street was flooded with like three of the Great Lakes, and it just seems like uh, that would be a natural thing to incorporate. Thank so, you. Bruce, when um, when uh, they get into this piece of things, looking at the engineering and that, um, will folks be able to see that information and um, and will that be provided at the same link on the website if they want to provide feedback or if they want to review what's going on? Can you remind I us of what that process is? Well, I think it will be because it's our intent to Point this administrator who will be overseeing much of this work in the process of, in the consolidation process and uh, I can't I can't say definitively because I'm not sure when the actual transfer of ownership will happen but certainly um, the community can express their desire for that and like I said it, we pro won't be able to fund it, but during the construction project, if, if it's feasible to do and the community wants to pay for it, I, I don't see why it couldn't happen. But it's but in general, just as a reminder that as they're going through these different pieces, the administrator will be providing information. So if people are interested right. in seeing what the process is or what the outcomes are, they'll be able to have access to information, right? Yes, uh, I didn't go into that much detail about the administrator, but one of the requirements in the law and the regulation for the administrator is to hold public meetings for the community at least every three months to keep the community informed about what's happening and those very specific milestones or very specific action, very specific actions that the administrator must inform the community of what's happening. So I don't think it'll be a problem to have the community involved if the administrator is is required by the regulations to put together a an outreach community outreach program to tell us how they're going to keep the community informed. And there will be, we, we will be hosting another meeting to talk more about the actual administrator in that process later. Is that correct? Uh, no, that isn't. Oh, there is not going to be another one on that. This is covering that as well. 
Well, we have to provide information about the administrator. And what we can do is provide that information to everyone. And uh, there's no, a meeting is not required, but we can okay. pose that question. And if people want to have another meeting about the administrator, we can certainly do that. But we will have information out there available so folks will know when, how to contact and get in touch with the yeah. administrator and keep involved in that process. Well, we will not appoint or officially issue an order for the uh, administrator until we have provided all the people involved in the community with the qualifications of that person or entity, and they have at least 30 days to comment on um, the selection to make sure you know, if there's some kind of problem or they have some alternative that we get that input. Okay. All right, so are there any other questions, folks? If not, and, um, and remember you can still email your questions in or you can mail them, that information's up on the screen. Um, for those of you on the phone, if you're interested in mailing in questions later on, the address is 1001 I Street, 17th floor, Sacramento, California. You can address those to Betty Gurma. Um, again, the email address is norcalengagement at waterboards.ca.gov. Um, Betty or Bruce, did you have any other comments that you wanted to make before we start to wrap things up? We just appreciate you all coming and uh, getting this information and we want your feedback. So if you have, you have a question you didn't ask, send it to us. If you have comments on the process, send it to us. We are intending to improve the water system so that you have a reliable source of clean, affordable drinking water into the foreseeable future. That's our ultimate goal. So we, we want your input. Um, you living there and you see things that we don't. So if you have information for us, please send it to us. All right, well, thank you, Bruce. And with that, again, um, we thank you for joining us tonight and um, have a great evening.